And now, weighing in out of the blue corner, Josh the Pong Thompson. 100% agree. And on the other mic, he weighs in from the red corner, Big John McCarthy. Well, welcome to everyone. It is the Weighing In Podcast where we are going to talk about the UFC that just occurred in Paris, France, the Acor Arena. We had a hell of a one-sided, I guess, if you want to talk about it, beat down in the first round with Hainato Makano going up against Benoit St. Denis. And he came out in the second round, looked good, did everything he could. But you could tell that the damage that he occurred in that first round, we're going to talk about all that stuff. My man is just sitting there saying, why are you talking about this crap without introducing me? I have the man, the myth, John, the legend, John. Uh, punk Josh Thompson. All right, guys. So John just did the recap on the main event. Okay, show's over. Yes. All right, goodbye. <laughs> it's, it's over. Uh, all right, guys. I uh, just start flapping my lips. Yeah, it's been, a good, it's been a good day. Uh, son had three football games. Daughter has scored her very first goal today. Collected her dollar because I give her a dollar. All right. So she, she got a goal. Pretty, she got a goal. She was stoked. She was happy. She was stoked. She all right. Cartwheels and everything in the middle of the of the field. <laughs> it was pretty funny. Yeah, uh, good. Yeah, good stuff, man. Kellen did really good. My son did really well defensively. Uh, had like five, four, four, four or five stops defensively. Uh, you know, stuff on the ball. It was nice, man. He had a great, great, great game today. Very a couple nice. good catches too on offense. Good yeah. stuff. Overall, man, great stuff. But hey, before we get started on the main event, Jins John's already broke it all down. Hey, this show is brought to you by BetUS. BetUS, this show is brought to you by BetUS. Go to BetUS with all of, for all of your best gambling options and odds. Brought to you by, of course, Wayne in Podcast. That's great. There you go. Like uh, but hey, make sure you guys uh, head on over to BetUS. Give it a try. If you guys click our link. Oh, wait, we don't have our YouTube 150. YouTube 150 on there YouTube, you YouTube 150 for BetUS. Get in there. You get 150% bonus on your very first deposit. Then you up get to 120, up to $2,000. And your next two deposits, you get 125% bonus on your next two deposits. Not bad. Uh, not bad at all, man. That's actually pretty spectacular. Hey, I, I do have to give a little shout out here. I, I don't know why he did it. I don't know who he is, but I have a song now. <laughs> Someone sent me a song nice. on X. It, it is a, a guy named Jake. I want to say Jake Husden. Okay. Not Hudson, Husden. And uh, he wrote a song. And it, it was just, I, I just, at least it's a little country. So it's kind of matches me up. So <laughs> well, you're going to have, you're gonna have so to. So, Jake, it I want to tell you, it was definitely way more than you should ever have done thank you for spending the time but i am not worth the effort so nah, but thank you awful. very much i can't wait to hear it we do you oh have my to God, have sign a waiver one. though so we can listen to it on air <laughs> that's it just say hey can can you sign this real quick or just say hey yes i give you full authority to use this song which we Boom. Can play it real quick yeah um yeah but good stuff man uh so overall though your opinion of the day your opinion of the card give me your overall opinion of the card i you know i thought the uh, the most of the fight card was stacked the way I thought with them want, you know, look at, they want the, the French fighters to win. They want, you know, Paris to become a bigger, uh, you know, city for them. They want France to be a bigger country for the, the sport of MMA and for the UFC. And so they, they, they match things up in a way where look, they're, they're, they're understandable when you look at the matchups, but if you're looking at it, you know, we talked about it, you know, but I, I'm going to be honest. I actually thought that, uh, Benoit Saint Denis was going to win over uh, Hanato Moicano, so I was wrong there. But you know, Imovov won, Gomez won. I didn't think that he did. Yeah, I'm being honest when I when I look at it. Uh, Brian Battle went out there and and you know put it on Gisette, so that was you know, a great one. But overall, take a look at how many French fighters won. The UFC is very happy. Yeah, it keeps them active over there. So they can see you yes. go back there. The Acor Arena, we've been there a bunch of times, yep. you and I. And, uh, the Grass Arena. Yeah, the Grass Arena. It's a, it's a, it's a <laughs> great you, arena, you gotta, man. You, you got to mow the outside. Yeah, yeah. they actually have <laughs> People a don't robot. Understand. The robot. Does. Oh, I know. They got those things that go. Yeah, it's go a down. robot that goes yeah. up and down. But look, I think it's – um, I think the that area – is uh, MMA rich? They, you know, they come from the more of that savat style kickboxing yeah, background. I mean, just take a look at how you know the crowd. The cr when we were there with Bellator long, you know, a while ago, the crowd was crazy. Mm -hmm. The crowds are getting crazier, even. Yeah, I mean, they they were you know screaming and yelling and booing and doing everything for their fighters. 
throughout the entire you know show which that's a long time to be there and they you know they were there mostly you know from early on and and they definitely were involved yeah the crowds are electric the people there are super nice i went there a long time ago and i didn't have a very good experience but then every since every time we went back after that's that that's because you were with me <laughs> we people did just you know we you did gotta be friendly with people almost all of paris <laughs> in like a full probably 12 hours on line bikes oh 24 we hours went, of line bikes yeah it was awesome man i right. would honest to god josh i will tell you it was one of the best damn touring things i ever awesome. did pedaling my ass off you know with you <laughs> I was everywhere in Paris, in Paris. Because we, like it wasn't like normally we walk everywhere, and I fucking hate walking. Yeah. I hate walking. I know you do. Like if it's small, if it's like more than three, four blocks for you, you're like okay, look, let's just. Find if it's more than off. if it's more than a mile and a half, I'm yeah. done. Say that. I'm oh yeah, it was more than a mile and a half. It oh took my us God. Two hours to walk one time. Oh, and they, well, they told me that what was it? It was Nordy. Twenty. The Eiffel Tower is only like a twenty minute walk. Yeah. Really. All right, let's go. That's that's uh, that's an hour and a half. I was like, if I can't see the Eiffel Tower from here, that means it's not a 20 minute walk. (laughs) That's exactly, it took us almost two hours. Oh yeah. Yeah. It was horrible. It was beautiful though. We walked down the river we walked, you know, it was awesome. We had a good time. Then you and I finally ditched them. We're like, let's jump on some scooters. Then my phone was dying. It was, it was a full experience, man. It was, it was (laughs) was crazy. It was fun. And not to mention, I was about to shit my pants because I couldn't find a (laughs) restaurant that that had a restaurant bathroom that was open. True. So it was that. Then I was trying to get onto a bike, and then all the bikes were dead. Or the batteries were all dead in them because they're all electric bikes. I mean, and you could really pedal them because it was like almost working double, double hard to get to, to pedal. No, it you, had to, you had to pedal it because that that meant, that kept the electric thing going too. Ah, oh, jeez, man, it was a pain. It was yes. awesome, man. I I just enjoy pushing the button, whatever the. <laughs> <laughs> that was better but anyways but hey we had a great time in paris it was a lot better as it went on but this is a i think the the energy in the crowd is electric there in paris the fans are very knowledgeable they don't they come from a kickboxing background with savat and yep. different types of like True. sancho and that type of stuff um man it's it's awesome it is awesome to see these guys um yeah right there george yeah, george is moving stretching. Just is that what that is dude so you're tearing something yeah, so yeah, you yeah. better be careful <laughs> <It's bung. laughs> tearing his oh, bone hole oh, damn look oh. at this he's a lot more flexible than he looks damn look at them flintstone God, feet damn though. what are you, those dude, what is feet. with that i thought i had flintstone feet dude. you gotta subscribe <laughs> to our only fans to see that dude oh, yeah, yeah but yeah. hold it hold it yabba dabba do baby yabba <laughs> do. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome Bro, those things are fucking. Those are. I thought I had wide flat feet, bro. You got some. Oh, yeah. I don't have flat feet. I got wide white. feet. Yeah, I bet they do. They got flattened out a little bit. I bet it's they right. do. Uh, all right, but let's go ahead and jump right into uh, into this uh, UFC here. Hanato uh, Moicano versus uh, Benoit Saint Denis. I mean, John, there's not really much to say, man. <laughs> no. Well, there was quick first round takedown, and then just well, it was, it was the, t- the way he took. You know, he caught that kick took the back basically you know off of it and from that point you got to figure that was 15 seconds into the fight yeah and saint denis was you know he was calm uh but man he took some big shots a couple of those were some big heavy shots and you could tell that they affected him and it was how calm that moicano was as far as just the transitioning he took his time and when he got to a good spot he opened up you know, to the point where Saint Denis had to work hard to get out, and he did. And then what kind of put him back in the same position after a little bit, you know, and, and he did damage. You take a look at his face, you know, both eyes were screwed up. You saw the lumps on his head, you know, he had a lump right, you know, to the back of his ear that was from an elbow. And you look and just he took hard shots there, you know, it was definitely a 10 8 round, you know. I think this being said 10 7, it's like, mm-hmm. nope. Wasn't a 10 7, but it was definitely a 10 8. And I actually thought that, you know, going into the second round, I was wondering what I was going to see out of Moicano. And instead of going out there and trying to finish it, I think he took the round off, honestly. He just mm. relaxed. He used his jab. He could have jabbed his head off because Saint Denis really couldn't, can't see it. You know, you know what it's like to have your eye swollen down a little bit. I've had mine in your, and man, when your eye is closing up, you're, you're straining, but you can't see the peripheral doesn't come in time. It's very difficult to get your head, you know, off the center line away from somebody that's, you know, attacking you with a jab and you just start to eat shots. 
he he did a good job. He was out there, but you could tell. I thought he looked labored in the way he was throwing oh, punches, yeah. even the kicks. Everything seemed slow, and he just didn't have that same pop. It was gone. Yeah. I mean, before I even get into the actual fight, I just want to talk about the one thing that fighters, if you do not have a mount escape, you should be drilling that over and oh. over and over again. That's a 10,000 step yeah. you know, move. <laughs> You got to do that so it's just natural. Your natural makes- instinct shouldn't be to post my hand on their face and just turn my back. And that's exactly what his was. And it was it was it was horrible to see because he was already in trouble because he was cut up. And then when that becomes your only escape, you have no idea how to escape from there. I mean, you're just getting especially against a good jujitsu guy. I mean, yeah. I learned real quick and I, I've told this story about the BJ take, you know, the first time I trained with him, him mounting me, him taking my back, him going I mean, we weren't striking, so thank God, because it would have been even worse. But I'm simply (laughs) saying, like, it was – I learned real quick that mount escape and back escapes are the number one things in the sport. Because if you get mounted, you know, you generally sometimes will turn your back to give it up. And then that's a finishing position where they can't take any damage, where you can. And submission attempts are are nonstop there, whether it's the arm bar, whether it's the rear naked, whatever it is. Like he they, locks everything. Yeah, there's there's not there's nothing really. They're not in je- any jeopardy at all if they're on your back. I didn't see that from Saint Denis tonight. He had no idea. Maybe he got rocked several times and everything went out the door and it became be. just post the hand and maybe potentially give him the arm bar. You know, I've I've known a lot of top level fighters that have been in the UFC, been in other big promotions, and literally like their defense is to give the arm. They yeah. just post the arm and hoping that the guy will take it. And I'm like, that's not a defense, man. <laughs> no, that's like, a wish. Yeah, that's like just in hopes that I'm like in majority of the time when I was fighting people and then they would go to give me the arm, I would never take it. I'm like, hell no, I'm in a good position right now. I'm not chasing I'll, t- I'll take it with t- 10 seconds left. Yeah, I'm not chasing that thing. So I guess we should have known, John, when we were talking about the odds from Bet US, we were talking about how we thought this fight would go. We should have taken a better look back at his very first fight in the UFC. He got destroyed on the ground in that fight. Dos Santos. You know, and so he got destroyed in that fight. He had a really rough time. And and all he did show in that fight was, man, he is tough. He is gritty. He's got no quit in him. Yeah, he has no quit. I even sent a, I even put a tweet out after the first round. And I saw that Moicano was kind of letting, like kind of you said, taking the round off. I was like, no, no, you got to kind of like, don't have to over push, but you've got to put pressure on him. Make him make, make him make a mistake. Make him, uh, because he was still laboring, make him reach, make him try harder, and then maybe get an easy takedown and then dominate the position again. I think the ref would have stopped it had he done that. They stopped it in between the round, I understand. But bottom line is, is that that moment, uh, at that moment, I think that I thought it was a potential mistake because after seeing what he did, uh, Benoit Saint-Denis did in his first fight, he was still there even though he got smashed in that first fight. He's somebody that still has power. And I think as the rounds would have went on, he could have built some confidence and potentially have come back. Potentially. Well, I don't think so. Not, not, you know, not with the way his eyes were. But I, I understand. Because we're talking, it's both of them. Absolutely. Uh, let's be honest. The, the right one, he wasn't seeing out of it. Yeah. It was closed up, and it was only going to get worse as far as the swelling. And then the, the left one was starting to look really bad, too. So yep. I, you know, I look at that, and I always want to say that someone has – you have a chance. Oh, you, you know, you can come back. And I looked at him, I'm like, I don't think he's coming back. From well, that. I do agree with you. I just I always feel like get nervous when fighters start allowing certain fighters to stay in the game. People that sure. have that no, that no quit in them. You know, like if there are certain fighters that have a little bit of quit in them that we've seen before in the past. I'm like, yeah, whatever. Oh, you yeah. know, these guys are probably just riding up the rounds, just trying to get through the fight, showing that they didn't tap, that it went to the decision. St. Denis is not one of those guys. No, like he's if he started win. feeling like he's touching you a little bit more and he's having he's finding his range a little bit more, <clears throat> he'll start opening up and letting things go. He's got the power to do it and he's got the balls to do it. And yeah. Moicano, I thought, and I have to agree, I think a little bit whether it was Paul, uh, whether it was Felder or whether it was uh Bisbing, he seemed a lot stronger. He just seemed uh his size and his strength are perfect for this weight class. And what he did the same thing on the ground and was he able to control him. He just looks like he's he is way better at 155. This he's is where quickly he becoming be. my favorite fighter, especially when he wins. Then he talks on the mic. 
Oh, he just said, yeah, Bisping is sitting there. I love it when you have someone Bisping ask him a question. He doesn't, you know, he's being smart. I don't have to answer your question. I'm going to say what I want to say. Yeah. Motherfucker, just does. France, motherfucker, yeah. France. Yeah, France, let me tell you, I went to the Louvre. I went to, I went to, it's a beautiful country. You're beautiful people, but you're fucked. <laughs> Fuck your president. <laughs> fuck Democratic. Yeah, fuck Macron. Oh, I love you. you. You go to another person's country and you just go, fuck their president. I go, you got to love a guy that just, I'm going to tell it like I, the way I see it. Yeah. I mean, he's hey, whatever funny. he's, I mean, he's going to have to have security getting out of there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. like, but he's, he's definitely, he's definitely going to be checked by their uh, TSA yeah. multiple times. <laughs> he's he's growing on a lot of people though um oh, you know yeah. his style is growing like he's coming out he he's really just he's found his way john the weight class jump from 45 to 55 and then understand i think what happens is after you get one or two wins in that division he realizes okay my chin uh, my chin's here. better my weight is be carrying here. properly yeah. my conditioning feels good i'm not killing myself to make weight um he looks fantastic man he looks Absolutely fantastic. And, so. and you, you got to say, and this is how he won the fight. He, he used to come out in the, when he was a featherweight, he was really into standing up and using the Muay Thai and everything and trying to knock people out. He's fighting smart now. Yeah. You know, you, you got someone like St. Denis. Hey, use, use your stand up to be that technician and get in, get the takedown. If you're going to be better on the ground, use that. He was. Mm -hmm. That's what an intelligent fighter does. And that's why he came away with the win. Yeah, I mean, where do you put? Where, so right now he's ranked number eleven. Then St. Denis was ranked number twelve. So he's not going to oh. jump in the rankings really a whole lot, but he should no. probably move up. I know I Max is he, number nine. I mean, like, let's just push Max out. I get it. I know he had a great win over, but I mean, if yeah. he's going back down to forty-five, exactly. I mean, There's no I, reason I to know. have him in the in the light. It, wherever he's going to fight, great. But yeah, I mean, he deserves gotta, to be in the rankings. But I just would well, like to just but, have him not taking. But up you got to be honest. Two different weight classes. You don't even care what he is in the rankings no, in lightweight, care. because no. you know, look, he 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 has the fight with Tapuria. We'll say he wins. Who's he going to fight? The number seven guy, the number five guy? Yeah. No. So, doesn't matter. Well, uh, Money Moicano called out Easy Money Patty Batty Patty I the know, Batty. I know. And Patty said, "Let's." I want do this. I want easy fights. <laughs> Patty said, let's do it. He tweeted out. He said, hashtag easy money. <laughs> Come on. Hashtag you got to love a guy that actually gets on the mic and says, I want the easy fights. <laughs> no, man. <laughs> I mean, if I was Moy Connor, though, I'd be looking ahead, probably somewhere around that Dan Hooker, Michael Chandler type fight. But uh, uh, Honestly, someone like Michael Chandler would be a great fight for him. Obviously, that's not going to happen. Chandler yeah. has his fight. But uh, someone in that type of you know position, Hooker, uh, Hooker's going to be difficult because Hooker is in the stand-up very long. He's good with his stand-up. On, the, on ground. the ground, Moicano absolutely has the advantage, yeah. no doubt about it. But it'd be, a, it'd be a good fight. Yeah, I agree. I think that's kind of what that fight. I, I want to see when when is Fazeev coming back. He is uh, Supposedly he's uh, training again, and they're, they're, I think they're looking at a matchup. I heard it was coming. Okay, hopefully soon. So hopefully soon, I'd like to see that. See him return. You got Moicano. He's gonna fight all. That's a, that's the thing with Moicano. Look, he's like, oh, I just fought the number twelve guy. I'm number eleven. Now I'm gonna go all the way and fight the guy who's number fifteen. Like he's he's not. Even, he doesn't even care if he's fighting the guys that are number three, number five, number. He's like, no, nah, no, nah, give me the fight with Patty. He said, I want the I mean, easy fights. Ah, <laughs> what a guy. <clears throat> oh, he, look, he's he's fun. He's obviously. You know, a fun person to be around, a hell of a fighter, and he's he's found that right weight class. Like you're saying, the the forty fives I think took something away from him, just making yeah. weight. And it's nice to see when someone finds, you know what? I don't have to be the biggest guy here. I just have to be good at what I do. One fifty five is obviously tough, tough ass division for anyone, but he's doing very well there. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. <clears throat> All right, next uh, co main event. Nazardin Imovov taking on Brendan Allen. Wow, this thing went out. You know, Imovov came out with uh, Allen in the first round. Allen hit that takedown. I thought, Jesus Christ, yeah. you gotta be kidding me. That easy? I mean, that easy, Josh? We we look. We know that Imovov can wrestle, and he was taken aback. I thought. He, I think he thought that Allen would stand with him for a little bit. He was not prepared for that shot, and it, it made the whole. 
you know, take down, look easy, picked him up, took him down. Didn't do a whole lot of damage to him. You know, was on top of him for, you know, the round. He landed some good shots, wins the round. But from that point, it just didn't look like Brendan Allen felt comfortable in the fight. Yeah, I mean, let me let me give you my breakdown on this. Is Brendan Allen came in going, look, I'm, he went all in on the takedowns and the control, yeah. the jiu-jitsu. He's like, hey, this is what I'm going to do. But what he didn't do was make adjustments in between rounds. In the third round, he came out and shot again when he should have actually just tried to stand more because he was having success on the feet. He's he just doing didn't fine. believe in it. He was doing fine. Yeah, he just didn't believe in it. He didn't believe that, like, oh, I should be, I can stand with this guy. Now, I'm not saying that he needed to stay in there and slug it out with him, no. but he was having success. He was landing some shots. He was touching him off. And when he committed to his striking, the success was there. It was it was landing clean enough to make Imovov start to respect him. Now, the will speed say, was a huge difference, though. Imovov was, was a lot faster. Imovov was faster, and I believe it was in the second round. Allen got deep on him, and Imovov hit a sprawl, moved his hips in a way yeah. that I went, God damn, that was fucking nice. Okay. I mean, so. But you, so you, so you say that, and I, and, I, and I constantly have said this on this show, is stop shooting on the legs. Yeah. Like, if you know that you can get in deep enough on a body lock and just squeeze those elbows Do close it. to you, suck them in, knee tap, drag them, step, sit them over your knee, and just, just take drag them over. Right. Yeah, just yeah. drag them over. Um, and if it's not there, it's not there. Make space and get out of that. Because you knew that Imovov did. It wasn't really like, oh, man, let me get this takedown. Yeah. So when you're fighting someone who you know is not like, okay, I'm going to keep this on. I want to keep this on the feet. I don't, I don't really want to go to the ground with him. He's not afraid to go to the ground. He just chooses, oh, look, I'm going to have more success on the feet and dominate this fight on the feet. If you know that and you're trying to get these takedowns, don't waste your energy getting stuck underneath them shooting double legs, especially some copy, uh, some sloppy, careless ones. He had some that were kind of just half-assed. Now, the one that you were talking about was an amazing shot. It just Imovov did a great job of Boy, defending. Just, I mean, that was art. Yeah, you looked at it. You went, "God damn, that was." Nice. It gave me flashbacks a little bit of the uh, the Matt Hughes GSP fight too, when he hit him, hit the double leg, went up to the body lock, and GSP switched in the air, yeah. one side of the next <laughs> in the wizard. I was like, "Oh shit!" I was like, "This fight." That was UFC sixty five, and I was standing there and said, "How the fuck did you do that?" It was in Sacramento, and I was like, "That was that? exactly what I thought when it happened." I was like, "How the fuck did he do that?" I said, you know? "This fight's over." Oh. <laughs> I was like, "You you can't take him down. You ain't winning this fight." Anyways. Uh, Brandon Allen, though, there was a little bit of uh, stuff leading up to it, but let me talk about the fight first, then we'll talk about the stuff leading up to his fight. Like, Brandon Allen, I thought, looked fantastic, but this was a typical, not a typical, this was a classic situation where he couldn't make the adjustments in the fight or in between yeah. rounds. And the fact that his corner kept telling him, get the takedown, you got to keep working for the takedown. No, man. Like, hey, if it's there, I mean, I'm yelling, I'm yelling at the TV going, if it's there, take it. If it's not there, don't force it. You're having success on the feet, you know, and that's, that's a mental thing at camp. Like, Hey, if this isn't working for us, what can I do to make this thing better? And we have to fill it out inside the cage. We have to make these adjustments on the fly. It's never going to go according to plan. It's never going to go that way, you know, and don't get me wrong. There's, there, yeah, very rarely. rarely. It's, it's a once, once in a lifetime kind of thing, you know, once or twice you'll, yeah. and that's when the guy, everything just, goes the way you plan. Exactly. It doesn't go that way. So, that I thought Imovov, he understood after the first round. I've got to get the next two rounds. He fought a very composed fight. He also didn't overextend on things. He waited for Brennan Allen to shoot and stuffed the takedowns and made him work from there. Brennan Allen seemed like a like a wrestler who was a little bit defeated. I saw a lot of the time his forehead was on the on the mat, yeah. you know, when he was trying to still fish for the leg. That's not there. And then also too, even when he did have, uh, have opportunities to get in on the legs. And he had it. It was almost able to drag him down. He didn't have the energy to yeah. climb up the body. He, he could, just, yeah, exactly. That's the he looked that's exhausted. The whole thing. Yeah, and I was like, he did. Man. He's holding on to a leg, and you look and you go, you got to climb, you got to go. Yeah, nothing. You know, and wasn't able to. I mean, uh, look, Imovov though right now is sitting pretty nice, John. If I'm looking at the rankings here, Imovov is sitting very nice right now. Let me see. Let me scroll up here. No, so he's perfect. Know. He's he's sitting in a position right now where you take a look and. He has a uh, legitimate claim to saying, I deserve a shot at DDP. You know, he's looking good. He's been looking good in all of the fights that they put him in. Yeah. You I can look well, and say, well, there's Sean people Strickland that, is next, correct? Yes. That's what I understand. Okay. Yeah. 
that um, I mean, like, it's, and so hold it. Look at it. Look at it after Strickland fights DDP. Who who should get a title shot? Well, why don't you Why don't you have Imovov fight Izzy? I would love fight. to see that. That's a great. I'm not fight. saying I'm against that at all, yeah. but I'm saying he has a true claim now to say, yeah, hey, I, I I belong in that in that conversation. Beating Brendan Allen, Brendan's yeah. a good fighter. You know, obviously, no, you know, you know, you every, fu- hand, you every know, fighter, every fighter, yeah, <laughs> he gave you a freebie, yeah, right. But every fighter is going to have a fight where things don't work out for him. I thought in this fight, just like you did, I think that if Brendan had switched up the game plan, the mentality of what he was looking to do as far as just the takedowns, it, the takedown could have come if he was yeah. able to use his stand-up a little bit better in opening up Imovov, making Imovov make the mistake and then getting in deep and taking him down like he did in the first yeah. you know, 15 seconds of the fight. If uh, you're not having success the one the double legs or the single legs, you need to start thinking of another way. If you true. only have double legs and single legs, let's start working on that body lock situation and scenario. Yeah. Or know, bring, just, you know, start, start to bring him into the cage, start snapping him down. You know, was, if there was one thing that I thought DC used to do incredibly well, he used to snap people's heads. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, he would do it, you know, a true snap down. You see people almost dropping or dropping to their knees at times. Yeah. He, yeah, he was very good. He, but he also has the wrestling ability to get away with having the overhook. Yeah. Most guys didn't have that. That's like, true. He, he was good at carrying the overhook because even if you went to his back, he was really good at turning back inside and fighting the hands and dropping his elbows inside to turn and face you again to get his underhooks back. Not a lot of guys can wrestle like that. I mean, in terms of they make it look so fluid. He he was, and I think a lot of it too, and DC probably going to kill me on this, but I mean, it's hard to lock your hands around Kung Fu Panda. To, dude, it's like, why, <laughs> dude, do you remember, was it Chris Taylor? You remember, you know who Chris Taylor is? No. Okay, one of the greatest pictures ever from the Olympic Games, 1972 Olympic yes. Games. Chris Suplex. Taylor is four, because at the time they didn't have a weight limit for the super heavyweights. Yeah. And the German who he was going to wrestle actually went around and like put his hands around to say, you know, give him a hug to see if he could touch his fingers. Yeah. And he realized I can touch him. So if I get a squeeze, I'll be able to. And was, and he did that belly to belly suplex on Chris Taylor and won the Olympic gold. And you look, you know, well, DC's getting close to being Chris Taylor. Yeah, there, there it go. is. It. There it is. That's the one baby. Big boy. That's one of the, that's a classic throw right there. That's one that you're either going to get the gold medal or you're going to die. Yeah, one of the two. <laughs> yeah, definitely one of the two. Whew. Um, But, John, there was some other stuff I want to talk to you about, though. Is Brendan Allen put out a video. Let me see if I can pull this bad boy up. It's I on. saw it when he was, when he was walking yeah. away from the weigh-ins. Yeah. You know, and uh, it was very – let me just – I'll play it for everyone. You guys can listen to it. Let me see. Maybe if I can get it to play. So everyone knows France has the most corrupt way of dealing with fighters ever in the whole world. Had fucking over 40 fights, fought outside the country, in the country, different states, that state. Made weight, no problem. Then they're going to tell me that I have to give blood or urine. First they said urine. I got to give urine. Right off the scale. So dehydrated. Waited three hours. Finally have to pee. Then they tell me I got to get blood on top of that. I do the urine. They say they're going to do blood. They do blood. They don't get enough. They try to tell me they need more. I said, you're not going to stick me again. No main, like, top guy of France had to do this shit. So just me and Morikano had to do this. The two most important fights on the card, and the two Frenchmen didn't get to have anything. They just get to go to their room, sleep, chill, eat, do everything they want to do. Fuck this place. This place is a fucking shithole. Just so <laughs> so, so angry. So angry. <clears throat> Um, now you and I were talking off air and I was, I had to stop you from talking because you're just going to ruin all the good content. And, um, (laughs) but I wanted to say this, if you test one fighter, you should, you should automatically have to test the other. Okay. It should be fair across the board. Doesn't matter what country you in and what state you're in. I agree. I, and in this situation, apparently it didn't happen. No, don't see, see, that's where you're making your mistake. Okay. Because you're you're automatically sitting there saying, "Oh, they they didn't get tested." Well, that's they what he said. Tested. I'm just telling you what he Don't said. Hold it, but they did get tested. 
They just didn't get tested at the same time that Brendan Allen was getting tested. Or maybe Hanato Mokano. I'm not saying he's wrong about that. But when you sit there and you have people that are in country, all right, and that are licensed by the French Mixed Martial Arts Federation and that they can go to at any time, they can, they can go to them and even before because they're there. When Brendan gets there, they don't know where Brendan's at or anything like that. And so they wait until, where do I know he's going to be? They wait until the weigh-ins. And I'm not Got saying it. it's right. I'm not yeah. saying it's perfect. But Brendan needs to know also that he has certain abilities too to sit there and say, hey, I can't pee right now. You want to you want to put somebody with me, they can come around with me all they want. They can watch me the whole time. But it's going to take me a long time before I'm going to be able to pee. You know what's funny is when I when I would fight, I would tell they would ask me after Wayans, "How did you get you to pee?" I'm like, "Just do it tomorrow before the fights," and they'd say, "Okay, okay, there you go." They and they that's just the needed, whole point. Yeah, I was like, I, I just made weight. Like it's gonna take yeah. me two hours, and I'm fucking starving. I just made weight. Like sure, you're gonna see me before the fight tomorrow. I'll yeah. see you then. Like yeah. you can just take. It. Now I don't know if that's the same case over in France. It's they make the it same work. thing. It's just that it's first off, there's a language barrier no, that absolutely. doesn't help it ever. Wee oui, wee. Oui. Okay, we we uh, George knows. Show you my wee wee. <laughs> well, that's what they want to see is the wee wee to get the uh, yeah. wee wee. But I mean, like I'm not saying that Brendan is wrong in that he feels like he was treated unfairly compared to his competitor. Mm-hmm. Okay, but trust me, they tested Nazardine. All right, Nazardine is being tested all the time, and they're they're being tested by not only the French Mixed Martial Arts Federation. They're being tested by the company that you know the UFC pays money to to have them tested and stuff. So I understand why he doesn't want to have to sit there and wait to pee, and I understand why he doesn't want to get stuck with a needle and have blood drawn. It's all bullshit. And as you said, it can be done at a later date yeah. or a later time. Yeah. Yeah, you so. can follow me around, but I'm I'm gonna go to yeah. the restaurant. Is what there I would you go. Say. That's it. <laughs> you want to follow me what, over there? I'm going. But that's there. what you do say. You say, look. Yeah. I have no problem peeing for you. I have no problem if you're taking blood, but you can't take it right now. I'm dehydrated. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. I need to go drink and it's going to take me a while before I can pee. So is it common practice that they have to test both? Yes. Is it a have to, or is it that they just do? Is it, it like, is a is common, it the rules? It's a, no, it's a common practice within athletic commissions okay. that main event is always tested. Yeah. Main event is always tested. Then it's a random down the roster of, okay, we're going to pick him. We're going to pick her. We're going to pick him. We're going to pick him. We're going to pick him. I don't, I truthfully believe if you're going to test one, you test them all. But the, what's it come down to? Expenses, money, Bingo. cost money. That's it. Man, that shit was never random. I got tested so much. <laughs> <laughs> That's because they knew you were cheating. Yeah, I, look at, I'm being things. honest. You know, look at what, you know, you were, uh, you know, I'm I'm just gonna say it like it is. You were a vain son bitch who mm-hmm. wanted to be looking good. I did. I was okay. It's all right, and you did. I'm gonna. I'll give you credit, man. You made it. You made it happen. But when you look like that, guess what they look at and say? We're yeah. gonna test him. They did. They do the look <laughs> test, right? That's what they yeah, do. Yeah, it is. You know, and yep. it's, the fatties. <laughs> the fatties who could be taking, they don't get tested. You That's know? hilarious. That's you know. That's hilarious. I mean, I, 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 I've tested a couple times with DC. They tested him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fatty the baddie. Well, you know, DC, we, and you got to look and say, you know, when you were, you know, being tested with DC, it might have been in Strike Force, might have been in the UFC when you it first was Strike Force. Yeah. There. Yeah. But, you know, DC wasn't that heavy. No, he wasn't. That's back true. Back then, he was actually put together pretty well because, yeah. you know, from wrestling, he was in shape. No, he was. Yeah. He was. You know what's funny is uh it's funny as uh, we look at him as like being this world class wrestler, which he is. Yes. But he it was, was funny after he I think he was getting ready for who was getting ready for? Ah, I can't remember. Who who did he fight that was a real good wrestler? John. He was getting ready for John Jones. But then there was I think there was talk of him fighting Brock. How about Josh Barnett? Uh Nah, he, didn't, he didn't need no, he knew he could out wrestle Josh. Uh you know, it was I think it was the Brock Lesnar fight. It, there was the potential that potential was going to happen. Yeah. Never happened, yeah. but there was a lot of talk of it happening. Yeah. And I remember he said he went back to the Olympic Training Center. He walked into that room and they, he's like, man. He spanked him. <laughs> he 
was like it was not what i remember i thought it was was like man these boys can wrestle and i started laughing (laughs) see but that you know and that's what's so funny yes and people get this whole thing like well he's a he's a world champion in brazilian jiu-jitsu or he's a world champion in wrestling yeah when you're not focusing clearly on just that one sport the separation factor just is remarkable how little amount of time it takes for it to make a huge difference yeah no yeah i agree you can't you can't be you can't be the best at one thing and be the best at everything Uh, it's i mean this is true 100 percent is true it's just hard because we're in a sport where you've got to be the best at everything now but you are the best at everything in you you can be the best at everything in your sport but you're never going to take those individual yeah, elements and go and beat the very best that are the the number one in those sports that's just not going to happen yeah you're not going to be the best striker you're not going to be the best wrestler you're not going to be the best jiu-jitsu player and those are the three elements we're looking at. You know what's funny though, right? Is the ones that are not the best at any of those three, but they're just substantially good at are, all of them are normally fucking the great fighters. Yeah, normally the best fighters. That's it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, where does Brendan Allen go from here? I think Brendan Allen doesn't really fall that far. I don't think he should. I really, I really don't. I think that, you know, look, he's, he was on what, a seven or eight fight win streak. Yeah. And he's in that position that he went to a foreign country, fought someone, and actually fought you know a close fight yeah he wins the first round he loses the next two there's things for him to learn from this no doubt and i and i'm sure he will you know one of the things that uh you know i heard from his corner that you know was said to him is hey you're better than him go out there and prove it you're better than him and i think he is yeah overall in what you're to we're just talking about if you want to combine the ground with the submission grappling, the wrestling, and the striking, you combine them all, I think he's the better fighter. He might not be if you separate them. But the way that they put them together and how good they are at him, he's good. at it. Look, yeah. at his, his ground game is good. His wrestling is good. But he was going, and, and as you were saying, he's using one type of takedown most of the time, and that takedown is getting yeah. stopped. It's time to switch it to another type. Yeah, you know, the only fight that really makes sense for moving forward now is Vittoria and Brendan Allen. Oh, dude, the truck, oh, come on. <laughs> you know, I mean, and that's why, I, that's, I'm being honest, that's why I said, I don't think he falls really f- at all. I think his next fight will be, what's Vittori at? Number five. Five? I'm sorry, number yeah. six, number six. Okay. All right, so he's at six. So guess what, you know, Brendan Allen's next fight's going to be at? Yeah, number six. It, sh- it should be. So, it should yeah, be. Yeah, it should. You, there's a, you get the history. Come on, there's a storyline there for you. Man. Call the and, casino and get the video yeah. footage. Let's go. <laughs> Boom, there you go. <laughs> Let's go. Let's have the, go. You have the UFC PR machine and just get it, get it, get that footage, man. It'd be yeah. perfect. Whether you're an Olympic athlete, professional hockey player, MMA world champion, or just an active kid, Element helps anyone stay hydrated. Each stick pack delivers a meaningful dose of electrolytes free of sugar, artificial colors, or other dodgy ingredients. Get your free sample pack with any Element drink mix purchase through link in bio. Also try the new Element Sparkling, a bold 16 ounce can with sparkling electrolyte water. Roll, train, ride, or play, but stay hydrated and stay salty. Um, all right, next fight. William Gomez and Joe Anderson Brito. I thought this was a, a really good fight. Yeah. I thought, man, I, Brito was just angry. He's man, a wild man. He was throwing man. so hard. Dude, He's a wild man. Times. He is a wild man. He was throwing absolute haymakers from hell at time, and so you know some of the things were landing. And he had he had Gomez in positions where Gomez wasn't comfortable with what was coming at him. He was trying to be the sharpshooter at time, but was holding back because he was afraid of that big shot coming and him being out of position. And not being able to stop it. I thought that the kicks 
that Gomez landed to the body were beautiful. He continually landed that left kick because he's a southpaw yeah. stance fighter going against Brito, who is an orthodox fighter. He continuously landed that kick to the body. And some of those, Josh, you know those ones where you look and go, I know that fucking oh, that had hurt. To hurt. <laughs> oh, I know that hurt. <laughs> look at Brito fucking, he, he made it look like it didn't, but it had to hurt. And, uh, you know, he was landing some kicks too. I thought the kicking game kind of went to Gomez. Mm -hmm. The grappling game definitely went to Brito, but I'm going off of the fact that the uh, the judges went with Brito. Uh, I mean, Gomez in the last round based upon a guillotine that Brito dived out on. That guillotine attempt by Gomez and Brito drops down, gets right out, gets right up. They gave it too much credit. Mm. It never truly. I mean, he's doing the, he, his job is to defend. Part of that sometimes is I'm gonna I'm gonna you know give up position drop out but he gets right up to his feet and you look and you go okay good job of defending it obviously was tight but it wasn't on very long how much credit did it give when Brito actually won the majority of that round yeah so I thought Brito won the fight I thought uh, he uh, <clears throat> did enough work in the fight to win it but Gomez gets the decision I wouldn't say it was a robbery but I know when it's the decision was made I sent you over a yeah. emoji like eh, I, think I was <laughs> i was leaning towards brito also brito did everything with bad intentions yep and i think that kind of made me feel like it was it, where he was kind of landing the seemed like he was landing the harder shots he was brito was trying to finish the fight yeah. gomez was trying to stay outpoint in the him. fight and outpoint him yeah exactly. yeah i agree and then i wondered do you, do you feel like you get like look i guess this is all piled up in my head now <laughs> As you said it yourself before we came, before we started talking about the main card is like they normally try to schedule these things so that the French guys win. When you go to sure. another country, you kind of want to have the fights evenly matched, but maybe the fa favors the person yeah. from that country. Sure, but you want to keep going back. You know, if, if yeah. the if the French people are always getting yeah, if the if the uh, French guys if, are always getting killed, no one in the, from France is going to go to the fights. Exactly. So if the local talent it doesn't matter if you're in Brazil, if you're in you know or in France or wherever in Australia, if they keep getting smashed. I'm like, I don't really want to see this. There's no one from our country really fighting or winning, so yeah. I don't want to see that. True. I mean, that's how, that's how I feel about USM men's soccer. I don't even watch the World Cup anymore because fucking <laughs> US men's soccer never makes it. Um, anyways, so go, Miss so I thought this was a little bit of a favorable to, favorable nod to yeah. the countrymen. That was one. And I thought Brito won the fight. It felt like he threw everything with bad intentions. He had, he had the, like you said, the aggression that was trying to finish the fight, not trying to just score points. Yeah. And uh, hey, and but uh, for me, it wasn't a robbery, but I was like, eh, I felt like they yeah. got this one wrong. I felt yeah. like they got it wrong. But you know what? I want to talk about this next guy, man. I told you. <laughs> Did I not tell you? Damn. I man, this kid is he's tough. He is mean. I love him. I, I'm excited. I'm excited for him now. This you this is a this is a George Keto George moment here <laughs> because Brian Battle was 300 and some pounds. And ended up going to a martial arts gym to try to lose weight and started doing really well with all the techniques and getting better and better and losing more weight. And look at where he is now. And, I'll, and I'm telling you right now, he is a tough MFer. Mm -hmm. He will take a shot to give a shot. He doesn't give a damn. I loved what he did. You can't go around and flip everyone off and then say, I love you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but Kevin Josette is a tough son of a bitch. He is physically strong. He's good with his hands. He's got judo. And I'll tell you what, battle broke him down. Yeah, he did. Broke him down. And man, I, I am, I'm a hundred percent on Brian battles, uh, train, man, because he is just fun to watch. He goes to fight. Yeah. What I was going to do is I was going to text you, uh, right after the fight. I was like, man, he looks so relaxed out there. It's the first time I've seen him not look, stressed out not look like he had to shoot not look like he had to like throw a hard combination and then rush in for the takedown he looked relaxed he stood in the pocket had a little bit of that nick and nate diaz feel to him he oh, stood yeah. in the pocket touch touch yeah that's keto george right there Jeez. <laughs> boy i tell Jeez. you what that's, that's two strikes there mister we Bro. get one more one more stretching and then the foot in the in the, <laughs> the 
put the foot. You put the foot. Me from stretching. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Uh, then the phone. The phone, and then it's got the the horrible little sound tune thing with it. Jeez, the ringtone. Come on, bro. Just a basic ringtone. Uh, no, that's why it's horrible. You got to change it to something better. At least hey, we need some we need music something dramatic. Something. I want I want Viking music out of it. <laughs> something. <laughs> Oh um, man, your eyes are like really like small, small, almost like uh, Benoit Saint Denis' eye today. <laughs> it was like, George, are you been smoking, bro? Are you been smoking? But no, uh, did Brian, you see how how excited he got when you said Nick and Nate Diaz? Nick and Nate, yeah, Nick and Nate. <laughs> I mean, I'm being honest, man. Like he had that flow today on the feet. He was just right outside the range, and yep. I I never really because Jusette is a is a big guy for the weight class. Yeah. He's a big guy. Brian Battle was the same size, if not maybe a tiny bit bigger. Battle used to fight 185. That's what I he won it, the John. tough at. I get it, but I'm just simply saying he he looked big for the weight. Like compared yeah. Jusette, we know Jusette's they, big. He's they were close to the same size. Yeah. Yeah, I thought, man, and he just looked so relaxed out there. He looked composed. I thought Jusette was. I thought he. I thought he was doing well. He had moments where he was doing well, but then I think the pace of Brian Battle, man, was too much. He started taking too many shots, and the pace of uh, Brian Battle, the relaxation, he didn't know where the punches were coming from. Just yeah. sort of looking herky-jerky a little bit, like, okay, he was flinching on feints. He's getting Brian, hit with a lot of shots. Yeah, Brian Battle looked good, man. He they looked start good. start that up. Yeah. He looked good. But look, John, I mean, does he make the rankings now? Oh, he, I don't know about don't, that. You don't think so? I mean, he's he getting might close, get, though. He's close. He's got to be getting I, close. I would, say, I would say he's right there. I think that's... If it wasn't, if he had gotten that win against Loomis, which he would have gotten because he was, yeah. he was lighting him up, ended up a no contest. But I mean, he might be, he'll be in the top 15. It's, if he doesn't get top 15 off of this one, they're going to give him a, a little bit more difficult opponent next time. If he gets past that, he'll be in it. Okay. Well, let me give you the top 15. You got Kevin Holland, number 15. Yeah. That's a tough fight for him. That's a tough fight. Neil Magny. See, right Might now, be beatable for him. I think I think Brian Battle beats Neil. Okay, you know, and, and this is nothing against Neil. This is, you know, Neil's older and near the end of his career. Yeah. He can't do the things that he used to do. Vicente Luque, number thirteen. Sorry, fourteen. Vicente, Vicente's got a fight coming up. Yeah, he's got Nick Diaz. Nick Diaz. Yeah, <laughs> he's yeah. got enough problems. But then you jump up to like Michael Morales, who's exact. He's yeah. tough. That's a little That's, too much, I think, right now for him. Joaquin yes. Buckley, too much for him. Jeff Neal, a little bit too much for him. Steven Thompson, too much for him. He's got to stay in that Kevin Hall. And maybe he does need one more or two more fights. Now that I'm yeah. looking at the rankings, he probably needs one more fight maybe yeah. to get himself ready. But he's got but to stay okay. consistent. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. He's, he's still young. He's got nothing but time. Yeah. Well, you know, time kind of goes by fast, John. <laughs> it does. That, that it does. I mean, shit. What? When's your? You turn eighty next month, right? Eighty two. Eighty three. Yeah, okay. Close. Uh next fight. Ah, uh, Morgan. I'll screw this up. Shahari against Gabriel Miranda. You know, we've watched Morgan, and the last time we watched Morgan, you and I both said, "Hey, that, that kid can fight." Man. Yeah, he is tough. Relaxed. And boy, I'll tell you, he was relaxed in this fight. We both know that. You know, Miranda's got great. Uh, He's got a great ground game mm -hmm. and uh, very, very capable on his feet. A little bit stiff, but man, I'll tell you what, Morgan just freaking just annihilated him with that left hook. That I mean, left hook that hit, boom. You catch people off balance. And, and yep. this is when we talk about fight. Like when you're fighting inside, inside the clinch, the best time to make them pay for whatever it is they were doing it's coming out is of right out of that clinch. Yep. And so many fighters get caught up in, and, and I'm, I'm a, I was a big culprit of this myself and I would break out of them and make space and just kind of like, okay, that's it. We're going to go. go back to the middle and let's fight. Yeah. This ain't sparring dude. Like this no. is, this is a real fight. I tell I people, man, on it. that exit, that yeah. exit is yours. Make yeah. them pay. Yeah, man. All and, the time. And, and like I said, I was a culprit of that. And I felt like, in these situations, it was a great time for Morgan to go ahead and land the shots, and he did, man. He did a great job. Ne never never allow them to have anything for free. Yeah. He threw a kick. I caught the kick. Make him pay. He got, you know, he got in clinch on the body work. I pummeled underneath. Okay, whatever it was, get the takedown off of it or make the space an elbow or a knee or whatever it is to make them pay. You've got to yeah. always make them feel like they're uncomfortable in every position that you well, they want to fight in. See, but people are going to look at Morgan's record, and they're going to say, well, he's got 10 losses. And you look, and he came up as a kickboxer in France, mm -hmm. and 
when he started MMA, he couldn't grapple. And so people would take him down and beat him. He can grapple now. Yeah. He is relaxed. He's calm. He knows how to wrestle. And, man, he's going to give people some problems. This yeah. is a guy in the featherweight division. Stand by. He's going to be a nightmare for a lot of people. Yeah, how old is he, though? He's got, I've got to figure out how much time he's got. He, oh, he's young. He's a baby. He's 28 years old, John. <laughs> yeah, 20? see? Just because he has a lot of fights. It looks like he's 40. But... <laughs> not with that hair he's got the, yeah. he's kind of does he's kind of doing the josh thompson but he's doing the tips yeah i mean hey he's doing the gotta tips. do what you can to repeat and look like this when you're 50 like me <laughs> all right next fight uh you had ferry zaham against matt the man the myth the legend frivola but man i'll tell you what matt frivola has has not done well with people from france he you know because he got knocked out by saint denis and then this fight right here, I'll tell you what, this I'll, I'll just go all, the, I'll go all the way to the end. He was unconscious yeah. as he was standing. He got lifted off of the goddamn canvas. His feet were off of the canvas from that knee. And when he was floating going down, which a lot of people would call falling, he was out. <laughs> my, my, my wife was actually watching with me. She, was, she, all, she instantly became a Pharisee hater. She goes, you know, there was no reason for him to have to hit him twice. This is true. And I said, yes, I understand the way you're looking at it. But many times a fighter is just in the moment and going after him and not even thinking that he's out. No. I go, so give him a little bit. And then after you, li you listen to him on the mic, you go, no, he did it on purpose. Yeah. <laughs> no, John, I mean, I'm being honest. There's been a couple of times where I've seen the guy hit the ground and I did it on purpose. Yeah. And then as I got older, I was like, ah. You don't really need no. it. No. Nope. Yeah. Once I know you're out, you're out. It yeah. just, it's one of those, when you're young, you feel like, nah, man, I'll make sure you never fight again. That, that's the whole thing, me. you know? And what is, you know, Zion is 27. Yeah. Yeah. So obviously, you know, he's, what and I, you know, the, the whole thing is, you know, eventually what, you know, goes around, comes around and he's going to be someone's highlight reel. He's got holes in his game. Yeah. He's good, but he's got holes in his game. He can yeah. definitely be exploited. Oh, so. absolutely. But then I'm looking at Frivola. Did I, did I hear it right? I'm trying to remember if it was him that uh, the commentary was saying, like, he had his wife there, he had his daughter there. He had his whole his family, family there. His there. dad was there. Everybody was there, yes. Like, fuck, man. Like, yeah. that shit drives me crazy. And I know no matter where you go, normally the family comes, but they made it more of a big deal because, like, hey, they get to visit and see Paris. Yeah, and see they're Paris. probably going to stay afterwards and see all the sites and do whatever. It's like... It puts a damper on it. Like you're now you're walking around going, fuck, man, I lost. I lost my whole family's here. It, it really yeah. does. It, ru it ruins the trip afterwards. It takes away from the moment you get to spend with your family. It shouldn't, but it does. Shouldn't. You know, because I, like I've said this, I don't know how many times. In 10 years, no one's going to fucking remember any of this shit. No. You know, I mean, think about this. John Jones is arguably the greatest guy to ever step foot inside the cage. People are already trying to push him out of the sport. Oh, yeah. He's not even out yet. And they're like, hurry up and retire so we can move on with the heavyweight division. That's how much fucking people don't give a shit anymore. Well, you, first <laughs> off, you, you know, and I'm, this is nothing against John, and but people put you in the positions to be the good guy or the bad guy, you know, based upon your actions. And John's actions have made people look at him as the bad guy. And so it's great to be the bad guy when you're in the, you know, pro wrestling and stuff until the end and when you're losing or you're out everyone forgets about you quickly. ah remember that guy yeah he was batman yeah. gone they do remember the baby face forever hulk hogan's gonna be remembered forever and even as much as he tried to be a heel for a lot of it they're gonna remember Hulk. yeah the, the the gsp the max holloways yes. and, and no yes. matter what people want to say bj penn's gonna remember be remembered oh. forever He's so one yeah, of those how many, guys. How many times have we interviewed someone and said, "All right, you know, who do you who you put in there as you know, you know?" How many times BJ Penn's name come up? And, and I'm not going to even say it's all because of you, you know. But it it, it comes up all the time because well, yeah. what's the problem with BJ as far as the farther things go down the line is people are going to look at his record and never watch him fight, not understand exactly yeah. what there was. At a certain point in his career, that you go, oh, yeah, you know, there was a time when no one could touch him. Well, it wasn't even it wasn't even that, John. It was like that guy, he was fighting guys that he shouldn't have been fighting. They no, were way the outside time. of his weight class all, all the, the time. time. 
Yeah. You know, and uh, yeah, I mean, we can go off. We can talk about BJ all day long. But like, what started off with him though is BJ stands for Baby J. Yeah. And so when you say Baby J, like it just had that like, and then the way he talked and the way he. Um, uh, just, just the way his face was. He, fa- he, he had a round face with these little the, ears that stuck out. The Cabbage yeah. Patch Kid. We yeah. still, it was the think, Cabbage Patch. That's exactly what the guys I think came to the gym with a Cabbage Patch doll one time. Like, it, it looked <laughs> just like BJ. It looked, it, yeah. And it did. It, the, yeah. it looked like BJ. But yeah, and then just the fact you call him Baby J, and then he was so good at jiu-jitsu. He had the tenacity, all that stuff. Fought all the weight classes. Didn't give a shit what size, what weight, who uh, you he were. He was crazy. He was nuts. But he, I'll give you a story of BJ, right? Because... I had BJ come to my gym to do a seminar one time. And so I set it all up with him and stuff, right? Hey, you know, I'll, uh, I'll come to the, I'll come to the airport and pick you up. He says, okay. And I said, you know, uh, here's your, here's your flight. You know, I give him the flight, tell him how much I'm going to pay him. Right. He says, it's all perfect. We're going to do it. So I go to the, I go to the airport to pick him up and I'm driving a Corvette, right? It's a two seater. Mm-hmm. And he's, he's got his, his little buddy. I can't remember his name is with him. Right. And I go, hmm. I said, well, you, you can both sit in the front seat if you want. He goes, oh, no, he's in the back. <laughs> I go, hey, BJ, there's not much room back there. He says, he'll fit. <laughs> we open it up, put BJ's suitcase, his backpack, and put that guy in the back of that Corvette, man. My, my Corvette was. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> who, who was the guy's name? Niza? <gasps> No, no, oh, uh, guy. I'm trying to remember. I want to say it was like Zach, but I can't remember. Can't remember. But it, it was like you didn't tell me you were bringing someone. He, goes, uh, he says I didn't. It was last what, minute thought. Was he uh, Hawaiian? Was the kid Hawaiian? Was he like Asian Hawaiian? Uh, no, he wasn't Hawaiian. I don't think. It okay, was... okay. No, I can't think well, of it. Niza was a small guy, small jiu-jitsu guy, real good yeah, guy. He just came in. It wasn't Niza. And then uh, yeah. there was uh, Scotty Pock, who was a good judo guy. He yeah, kind of, no. But Scotty was about, about our size, maybe a little bit smaller than us. Yeah. Yeah. Good, this good guy was about guy. 145. But Interesting. I was just laughing, man. Was like, <laughs> Sorry, you got to be in the back of a Corvette. Oh, dude. geez. No problem. I got some good news, ladies and gentlemen. Our podcast, Weighing In, was the first podcast to ever partner with OnlyFans. Bringing you guys the best content we possibly can in the combat sports industry. We are making some leeway on bringing sports to the OnlyFans platform. Where top-tier, world-class athletes can connect with their fans. We're talking about combat sports athletes like Demetrius, Mighty Mouse Johnson, Chris Cyborg, Luke Brockhold, AJ McKee. We've also got pro surfers like Billy Kemper. <sighs> Some chilly news. I want you to head on over to the Weighing In OnlyFans channel. More connection with our fans on our OnlyFans channel. Only available on OnlyFans. All right, next fight. All right, we had Ian Kutalaba taking on a newcomer in Ivan Urslan. And I'll tell you what, this is a tough fight. fight. It really was. And it was entertaining. They both, you know, went after it. It's, it's so It cracks me <laughs> with Ian because you know what he's going to do. Yeah. And I, and I have Herb Dean as the referee, right? And Bruce Buffer doing this little, you know, you know introduction thing. And you know that Ian is going to walk towards his opponent. He only does it every time. So it's not like, oh, do you think he's going to walk towards you? It's like, hey, there's this thing called we call MO, modus operandi. That's what he does. This is his thing. And here's Bruce. You can see Bruce backing up, kind of keep, trying to keep him between the two. And there's Herb standing on the side. Go ahead. I don't care, man. Yeah. <laughs> don't care. I love it. But I love, I love the looks. I love the intensity of Ian Kutalaba. I love the way that he doesn't take his eyes off his opponent the whole time. Yeah. He always tries to do that intimidation thing. And it's like, hey, whatever you need to help you, you know, get yourself psyched up, I'm all for whatever. You know, I don't think it's doing anything to uh, no. your opponent. But if it if it gets you going, great. But I thought it was a really entertaining fight. I thought Kutalaba did a nice job throughout it. He showed, you know, good stand-up. You know, he's always had good ground. Um, it was a, a tough fight, but he definitely deserved 
I thought I didn't I didn't, did not think that should have been a split. Decision. Yeah, I didn't think it was a split either. I thought Ian won the first two rounds and probably lost the third. It was a yep. 29-28 type situation. Yep. Uh Ursula, I thought he looked good, man. For a first time fight in yeah. the UFC, the jitters it seemed like it may probably got to him in the early round. A little bit. Kutalaba sure. being the guy that like I'm gonna walk across the cage and put a little fear in you. You're welcome to the UFC. I'm here to prove yeah. to you. I've got more had... fights than anybody here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. <clears throat> Yeah, I get it. I understand. Yeah. Uh, but it was uh but I thought Ursulan fought a good fight, man. He fought tough. He just he was just, and also too, he didn't lose the first and second round by a lot. No. It was like one or two shots no, no, no. going the other way, but it probably won him the round. Yeah. You know, yeah. so but overall I thought it was a very fun fight. Because you had two guys that were really just heavy hitters. Yeah. Not really looking for takedowns, you know, threatening a little bit here and there when they needed to, but outside of that, they were standing and banging. I would like to know what's wrong with uh, Ursuline's knee or whatever it was the problem at the end with him standing. Yeah, I wanted to know too. He was hobbling around. Yeah, didn't, I, I didn't see anything in the fight that made me think that he, uh, you know, had a problem. But obviously, there's something. So I don't know what it was. But it was a good fight. Very entertaining fight. John, any other fights on here you want to talk about? Uh yeah, I want to say that Ludwig Klein and Roosevelt Roberts. Did a great job in that yeah. fight. I thought I had pointed that one out. I said, "Hey, that's going to be a good fight." It was, and I knew that Roosevelt had gone to uh, Kill Cliff and was training there. And I thought, you know what, that could be a difference maker for him. And it really, he didn't get the win, but it, it's a difference maker for him, Josh. Yeah, he's now training with people that are better than him. He's seeing, you know, exactly what needs to be done if he wants to be at that level. Because Ludwig Klein is a good fighter. Yeah, he is physically strong. He can fight in the stand up. He's got good wrestling. He'll go on the ground with you. He's not worried about that. Get some good elbows. So, boy, I'll tell you, man, strong. That was tough. very impressive. Yeah, the elbows yeah. were nice in that fight. But, you know, Klein gets the win and he should have no doubt about it. But I got to give it to Roberts. He actually put up a better fight than I thought he would against that opponent. Mm -hmm. And I think his uh, his, you know, just his going over to kill Cliff. It's working. Stick with it. Yeah. You know what fight I thought was good was the Daniel Barrez Barrez versus uh, Victor Ala. Oh, it was. Dude, he got his nose broken. He did. <laughs> that forearm, spinning forearm, it hit him. And I went, that oh, shit was broken. facing the other way. No, I just knew. As soon as it hit, I said, oh, that you broke his nose. I and then smashed. I don't know. Probably about, you know, 30 seconds later, they go, I think his nose is broken. Said, oh, you think? Oh, yes. You think? <laughs> but I thought it was a really I'll tell you what, it Alta Marino, man, mm -hmm. he could have, he could have, they could have given him that fight. They could have was close, and and in the first round, I thought he was going to get smoked. Well, the the only right guy, yeah, I, you, I thought so too. But the thing is, in the third round, he could have potentially lost the the won that round. He got dropped yeah. to the very end of very that end, round, but he was off balance and because his foot was yeah. up. But he got and you have to look at that, too, though, John. <laughs> yeah, you got him with a good shot, but you pop right back up, and you look and you go, okay. You know, everything is about how the yeah. fighter reacts. It, so, the fight could have went either way, but I thought if you're if you're into watching two smaller guys get after it, I thought it was a good fight, man. Yeah, they, they threw but, down. There was a lot of activity. The, uh, Daniel Barres or whatever, he kept walking forward, kept pushing pace. Yeah. I thought it was great. The, it was a good. Fight. The women's fight before it though, mm -hmm. that was actually a really good fight. With Cavalcanti mm -hmm. and uh, Cornell. But, man, I'll tell you what. Whoever gave Cornell that fight, you could have given her the first round. The last yeah. two rounds, there's no way in the freaking world she came close to winning anything there. She got her head. She looked like a Pez dispenser. Mm -hmm. She was getting popped back more and more and more. How in the world does someone give her, her the second or third round? She's from France, right? Yes. <laughs> and she was shocked that she lost. And I'm like, someone needs to talk to you. <laughs> yeah. The uh the Oki fight with the great submission though, Chris Duncan. Yeah. You see, I thought it was he jumped on the jumped on the guillotine real quick and bink bink done. Yep. Just yeah, completely thought, caught off guard. Awesome. I thought podcast Dave was probably just happy as hell. He finally got a <laughs> Someone from Scotland to win in the UFC. To win so a fight. Very happy here. To win a fight. <laughs> uh, hey, guys, that's going to wrap up our uh, UFC talk. And hey, remember, this episode is brought to you by BetUS. Uh, is there anything else for us? Is it, what other news? I know we posted one or two news things. So let's go ahead and talk about those real quick. There was the PFL Europe. I know you didn't watch it, and that's okay. I did not but, watch it. 
Yeah. Talk Stevie to Ray beat uh-huh. Lewis Long with a modified twister. Oh, really? Yeah. Strange, strange to see. And I'm, I'm I got to give him credit, man. He's doing it against a guy that can roll. When was the PFL? Today. I know, but this morning, early? No, same to same time as the UFC. Of course it was. <coughs> of yeah, course other, it was. It was on it was on ESPN. Oh yeah. Okay. I'll have to God, watch it so cool. we can give some review on it on Tuesday. I do want to say, uh Bet US posted the odds for the Diddy <laughs> <laughs> crime. Yes. That is pretty oh, hilarious. Oh my God. Yes. What are you, what are go... you thinking? Well, how what? much time do you think he gets? I think five, 10 to 15. You think 10 to 15? Yeah. Uh, okay. Crazy. I think he gets 10 to 15 also, but I also think he only does like six. Mm. No. Yeah. You don't think so? What do you What do you think? Not, not with the wall, with what they're, what they're charging him with. Do you understand yeah, the I do crossover? Understand. I don't know. Oh, I don't think. I don't think. Go ahead. Well, you know what? Go ahead. Give it to me, John. Yeah, yeah. Explain it to the, me. The, the, the crossovers, human trafficking, uh, human trafficking along with drugs being okay. used and sex crimes on top of it. Look okay. at everything. You know how you get some of these uh, lawsuits that all of a sudden, hey, you know, you can pay this out here, but if it goes to court, then you have to pay triple. Yeah. Well, guess what? All of those combining them, the mandatories become just ridiculous. Yeah. So to sit there and think that he's going to get 10, no. His his best play is, let me talk to you guys. Okay, what, what do you want to know? You've already got all the tapes. You want me to tell you when they happen? Do you want me to narrate them? I'll narrate those for you. Okay? <laughs> you know, David whatever Andrew, it is. Brutal. I'm just being honest. And he's going to do at least 20. He'll get a sentence of 20. And then he'll get, it depends if federal time is different than state time. And so... You don't get uh, time served the same amount as far as, you know, one for one type thing. So he'll ne- he'll end up doing somewhere in the area of 14, 15. John, I think at a minimum, I think it really depends on who becomes president. And it also depends on can he make it to a trial? Yeah, that's the other thing. I th- I didn't, you know, that's one of the odds they didn't have. Ooh, I know. Was I was, he, that's he, what he, I was he, looking for. Yeah, I was waiting to see if he was going to get Clinton. Did- <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I thought that they, that would have that or Epstein. Or like Epstein. I'll tell you what, yeah, don't think Epstein. that he's going to get Obama. Yeah, I just call it Clinton because it's yeah, been it such a long standing thing. thing with them. They're the ones that started it all, I think. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was, but man, I mean, Epstein and all that. But look, I think the odds came out with that US. I think it was a great little. Uh, that was, little it was funny. But it's great, man. I mean, look, if you say he's going to get life, you put 100 bucks down, I think it's plus 2,500. Anything over twenty five, I think it was anything over uh, twenty five years was like See, plus. But it's hard. It's hard to say life because I don't think he's going to life sentence. Go to plus trial sixty five hundred. Yes. So more than twenty years, but less than life is plus twenty five hundred. John. Yeah, I mean, bad. I would almost be willing to throw that hundred bucks down. There you're going. You're starting to throw. I'm already throwing a hundred <laughs> bucks. Maybe maybe even two hundred. It says from sixteen to twenty is plus five fifty. Yeah. I mean, look, if he gets a fraction of, I mean, unless he rolls on people. Oh, he's, he's going to roll. He's going to roll for sure. For sure. Every single time. You notice how, J, uh, how uh, Jay-Z hasn't said anything? He's quiet. He's real quiet. A lot of people are quiet. Right? They're None super quiet. These days. How many of them are deleting their uh, social media accounts? Well, I mean, I think Meek, Meek Mill came out. Yeah. They're, Meek yeah. Mill? Yeah, they're all done. Meek Mill came out and was like, "How come all these CEOs are retiring? They're yeah. taking they're taking their early pensions and stepping down." Eek. Anyways, but look, it makes for fun. It makes for some fun content. And uh, I actually reached out to Bet US and said, "Hey, I've had some fans ask me when is Bet US going to come out with some odds." Just want to remind you guys, man. YouTube 150 gives you 150 percent bonus on your first deposit. So if you want to throw some money down on the on the Diddy Combs, uh, how much time does he get in jail? Let me just no run money, through them real no quick. Problems. He won't serve any years is plus 1,000, which I don't think that that's possible. I think he's going to end up serving something, whether it's two years. I don't care if it's in a country club. He's going to serve something. Um, it says from one to five years is plus 200. From six to 10 is minus 150, 115. From 11 to 15 is minus 125. And then from 16 to 20 is plus 550. More than 20 years is plus 2,500. And life sentence is plus 6,500. I don't think he'll get a life. 
I think he'll get somewhere in that. And I think they, they have it kind of narrowed down. Eleven. No, to he's trying to avoid getting life. That's why he'll. That's why. He'll yeah, he'll talk. settle. He won't get life. But uh, I think he'll even get less. I think he'll end up getting somewhere around that eleven to fifteen, but like probably sixteen to twenty. He, I think this is what I think. He'll get sentenced sixteen to twenty. I think well, he'll first end up off, doing the bet. The betting is doesn't matter what he ends up doing. The betting is off of what. Yes, he yes. You got to make sure we're clear on that. Yeah. It's what he gets sentenced to. Oh, throw throw a little bit of money down there. Throw a little okay, bit of money what down about? There. Let's go to another court case. The UFC has oh. settled their agreement with the fighters. Uh, I don't even know what to call it. I know it's not it's the Lee. Union. It's the Lee group that they're settling with. The Lee group, exactly yep. for three hundred and seventy-five million. So it was upped from three twenty-five or three thirty-five. Three thirty-five. Three seventy-five. Okay. Do you think that this is now going to appease the judge and he's going to let it go? Or you think he's going to go, no, that's not that's not near enough for what well, I was Well, I think some of the things that were taken out, right? So then now it's only the Lee group. It's not yes. has nothing to do, with, nothing the to do Johnson. with the Johnson group. So that's one thing. So before it was like a, I don't know, I believe they, they changed it to 90, like a 90-10 10 10, split. But before yeah. that, it was like a 75-25 split or something no, like that. No, I think it was 50-50 at one time and then it split yeah. and then it split again. So then they changed all that over, and then um, I mean I don't know I t I talked to I was sending out the text to John Nash who we had on the show talking about it, and he's like yeah realistically nothing's really changed unless the judge approves it. So yeah sure you can come off with three seventy five, but and that sounds great. But if the judge the judge can come back and say no, and I mean now that it's a hundred percent three seventy five to to them now I wonder if anything changed. Do now the international fighters get some, because before they didn't. Um, did that change now? Um, on top of that, you know, there's other little things that, that they could have possibly thrown in. I don't know. All we're, all we're hearing right now is the money. Yeah. And so just seeing 375, I think my personal opinion, and I said this a long time ago, the fact that it was below four, I thought it should have been closer to five. And that's not because I'm trying to be selfish. I just thought <laughs> when you're talking about a 1.1 or $1.2 billion thing, that if it did go to trial and they could end up paying 1.6 uh, billion, 1.2 billion. 1.6. 1.6. That's what they said. It could go yeah, on. I would have. I would have expected it to be somewhere around the 500 million range. So I wouldn't be surprised if the judge said no. That's not going to be enough. Come back. But now they're also, I guess, apparently running up on this. The time it needs to be done yeah. within a certain period of time. And we're is. coming Where up things on start that. Start to go away. That's right. Yeah, this whole thing got filed in 2014, correct? And here we yep. are in 2024. Coming to the end of 2024. Is it a 10 year period or does it? Yes. It's a 10 okay. Year period. So then, if you go to court, I mean, you never know. And will yeah. will the court will be aware in Vegas? They'll do it in Vegas. Yeah, I don't know, man. I don't think the fighters would win if they were in the, Vegas. The, this judge went to school with Dana and Lorenzo. <laughs> ah, well, no, maybe. this is the judge that's kind of been against the UFC this whole time. So obviously, yeah. either Dana and Lorenzo, and it can't be Lorenzo because Lorenzo's gone. So Dana was not nice to this guy. <laughs> Something. I'll tell you. Okay, here's another one for you. Have you have you seen the series Mr. McMahon? No, I yes. have not. Look at, look so at good. See? Mr. McMahon. Mr. McMahon. What is it about? What's it on? It's on Netflix. It's on it's Netflix. About Mr. McMahon. All right, I don't. Yeah. I don't. Oh, like the Jimmy owner. McMahon? The owner of WWE. Oh, Mr. McMahon. No, Vince I have McMahon. not. Did they release all the the texts and threads? Yeah, they nothing. talked about it a bit. Oh, but they didn't release. They, they didn't, have all didn't... different kinds of things. Oh, you talk about lawsuits. <laughs> He's a John. His, his are gonna be never ending. It's scary, right? It's Man, scary I'll to think you. of all the things that are that are going on out there. And was like, oh no, but like people don't do that. No, 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 people do. Oh no, people, people do. People do. They do. Oh, tr trust me, I've seen people do. It's crazy, people are weird. right? people are yeah busy. and it's, it's what's funny is you, you'll get one you know out of i don't know say it say a hundred say a thousand you know and it's like you know then as soon as there, someone hears it they think everyone's doing that it's like mm. no no he's a freak he's the freak that's doing it you know but i just looked at you know the in in watching that thing you know and, and the whole thing i heard the same and this is, you know, this is a guy who's fucking, you know, in business with his father for a while and then in business with his children. 
And really, in the end, like someone told me long ago, friendship is friendship, but business mm-hmm. is business. He basically is that way with his fucking family. Jeez. He says, no, business is business. You know, and it's like, wow. I mean, you can't deny his success, though. I mean, it may not no. be the way, the route that you want it to be, but no. su- it, it, is, it is. It is. It has made him successful. So. Very weird, strange way. But it also yeah. made it to where, you know, he would bring people back or onto his show that no one would ever think that he would because it's good for business. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's true. Like so, if you like a lot of people let their emotions get in the way. That's exactly it. And he doesn't and, it's yeah. like, no, well, what's good for business? Well, okay. I hear I said the same thing with uh, Dana White is very similar to that. No, he is. You know, I don't know. The if Randy Couture gonna, thing. Yeah. The, no. The, See, the hold Anthony on. The Johnson Randy Couture thing. thing. He will never bring Randy back, even if it was good for business. No, no. He already brought him back, John. <laughs> Where? <laughs> he brought him back to the UFC after Randy tried to leave and go to affliction. Yeah, no, 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 no. He, oh, he brought him back. But he then he, just... pissed, he pissed him off again after that. And that's oh, of all. course. Yeah. But I'm saying, though, but he brought him back for it was good for business. Oh, yeah. True. You know, and then the same thing with Anthony Johnson. But it's not bringing him back. He was he was always under contract. Yeah, but yeah, Randy he tried just, to leave. They, they, just, they just changed his contract. Well, because he's yeah. extremely underpaid compared to what he was then given. Yeah. So. I mean, it, they brought AJ back, too, Anthony Johnson. Yes, they did. Uh, who but else did the, I? Who else but AJ did? didn't piss him off. No, I mean, he pissed AJ off. pissed him off as far as weight. He cuts. pissed Joe Silva off. Joe fuck. Yeah, well, Joe that's... was so mad. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I'm sure he pissed Dana off too. But Dan's like, look, I'm just gonna wash my wash my hands of this shit right now. Let's yeah. go. You go do your thing for a bit. Let's let the dust settle. Show me you can make weight. Oh yeah. shit! Look, wait, you're not a seventy pounder. You're a two or five pounder. Two or five. Oh, you're wow. a heavyweight. There you go. Yeah. Perfect. All right. Well, hey, that's going to wrap up our show. And hey, like I said, this episode is brought to you by BetUS. Thank you guys so much. And Element. You know what I've been doing, though, with my Element, John? Is I've been taking because uh, I like their Element Sparkling, the ones that they have in the cans. Mm-hmm. But every once in a while, when I, after, after I've already drank my Element Sparkling, I, I always have Tapa Chico. And so what I do is I take the packets and I put a packet in the, into the Tapa Chico. It's so good. So good. <laughs> and then I also tried the other day the Citrus. You're what up I did with was I rimmed. Recipes. Yeah, I take I take. No, don't citrus. even talk about rimming things. Okay, no, I rimmed. Stop. Stop. We're gonna stop right there. And cut. <laughs> what? <laughs> I, I. You know what rimming is? No, I don't. I, 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 put, I didn't think you did. I, I put I put salt on the rim of the glass. Sure, you did. And, ma- and made a margarita. I, I don't. What's yeah. rimming? Licking John, a please. Butthole. The fact that you know what something I don't. A butthole, licking a butthole. Oh, really? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you fucking pervert. Is. <laughs> this is this is what these are the things you find out about in L.A. This is LAPD right here. Oh, this, this is, is LAPD, dude. No, you, trust me. <laughs> Jeez, you see a whole lot You're more now. Filthy fucking. I got our mayor rim deep in a. In a oh, jeez, yeah. man, jeez, it's getting deep out there, ladies and gentlemen. It's getting deep. See? There you hey, go. Hey guys, again. want to wrap this up? Want to thank you guys so much. Make sure you guys join us over at OnlyFans. OnlyFans. We are subscribed to us over there. Join us over there. Content is great. We're doing some extra stuff over there. So, hey, hit us up over there on OnlyFans channel. Well, thank you guys always for supporting us. And we are, John. For everyone out there, I hope you enjoyed the fights. We will see you.